Welcome back, loyal fight fans, to unboxing. Eat that shit up. And this weekend, I ate that shit up. I felt like um, it was a devastating loss that Justin Gaethje took. And listen, when you pick an underdog, betting or you know money or no money, you have to know that there's a great chance that they'll lose. That's why the odds are the odds. And I understand that every time, and especially this time, being as it was Khabib, you know, that we're talking about here. You know, that being said, no one's ever done that to Justin Gaethje. Everything that Justin Gaethje talked about, uh, combined with his brilliant coach, Trevor Whitman, there was a lot that, that went into actually making this pick for me. And I say that honestly, but beyond the, the obvious that that's what my heart wanted to see, there was really a lot behind this. Justin Gaethje, no one takes him down. Um, his only loss is he still drags the fight out, cuts him, bruises him, swells their eyes up. You know, uh, you know he, he's just a dog in every fight. I thought that even if he lost this one, that it would be a drag out brawl for a while, rounds and rounds at least, at least three rounds, if not four, you know? And I thought, yeah, even if he lost it, he, he might, he had a very good chance of actually cutting Khabib. He cuts all his opponents. He's, I think that he has ever fought, he's cut them. Um, no one takes him down. No one lets his, uh, get, gets his back to the fence, even though they try very hard. Uh, there's a lot of factors. The things he was saying, creating car crashes, meeting him because he likes to walk his opponent down, knowing that Trevor Whitman is one of the greatest coaches in MMA. You know, he's a top two guy for me. I think undebatable, he's a top three coach in, in the MMA. Um, and there was just a lot of factors. This, it's Khabib's gonna Khabib, you know? Khabib's just gonna Khabib and I guess that's the yeah, that's all there is to be said about that. No one's ever done that to Justin Gaethje. Um, you know that was a competitive first round. Um, I I thought you could even give it to Justin because of the harder shots and the significant strikes being extremely close, and that Justin's were more effective. But then he got that Khabib got that takedown. You know, in the last 30, 40 seconds, and then was even able to you know pass guard and get. Um, you know, and go for a submission, um, you know, in, in the last 10 seconds, whatever. Uh, so he gets that round, you know. But either way, you know, when I knew the fight was over was just how Justin looked after getting up right after that first round, going back to his corner, and he looked so exhausted. He looked so exhausted. And then, you know, people say, oh, well, that's what Khabib does. That is what Khabib does. He, he tires his opponents out. It, he's never once done it like that in the first round. I mean, never. Unless, unless you go back to people that just don't really matter. Like people that you can see now, it's like, you know, Khabib, we know who Khabib is now. Of course, everybody gets better, but you, you, you know, I don't want to hear anything about people that he first fought, that no one knows their names, that they're not, uh, that they've never been in top 15, you know. Um, I, outside of that, the, the actual real challenges the, in opponents that Khabib has had through his career, um, he, that's his style, but it takes him a long time. It takes him at least three rounds. A lot of his fights go three rounds, if not four rounds, um, before he's able to start doing that stuff. This was just, uh, this was just nuts to watch how tired Justin was and I was sitting there with my friends and saying you know right there I was excited during that first round um, even when he's getting the submission you know of course that's not good but it was the end of he's very dangerous like that obviously he puts away his opponents but it was the end of the round so I was calm and said eh, that's the end of that round hopefully regroups Tre this is where Trevor kind of comes in you know Trevor Whitman his coach Justin Gaethje's coach uh, as well I, I, th I thought, you know, we'll regroup here. I, I believe a better, um, 
you know, a better start. They, we won't get right back to this. But as soon as he got up, and as soon as the camera went on him and going to his corner, the way he was breathing, he was so tired. This was a man that was completely almost gassed out um, in one round. And, you know, even when Justin, before he became a reformed fighter with Trevor Whitman, you know, he, he, even when he was an animal swinging haymakers, and that was his whole deal is that he'd get tired. You know, even for him, again, getting put away, it's gonna take at least three rounds. It's gonna usually be four. I think the Poirier one that he lost was even in the fifth round, I believe, um, when he finally broke. And that was when he threw just caution to the wind and every punch was a hard punch and he would eat shots a lot more than he does now. This was just like, I did not see this going this way um, in any of the possibilities that the fight could have gone. This was not one of them that I saw. And I wanna say that in fighting, you know, when, or being a fight fan for, you know, and, and you're watching fighting, you're obsessed with fighting, you know, um, boxing, whether it be boxing or MMA, um, it's a preference thing, you know? Some, and people are all different. Some people, you know, it's a combination of things. Um, you know, how the person is and in, 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 that you perceive them to be, the things they say, are they a good person, they a shit talker, what, which one's your preference that you like, um, you know, the way they fight, are they uh, elusive, you know, at least even in boxing, like, are they elusive, are they a Mayweather, and then people, some people just go, oh, they're just running, you know, um, and you don't prefer to see that kind of style of great defense. Um, and then putting on the offense later. Uh, some people like the, the guys that come out swinging. I, I like both, you know, um, for boxing. And for, for MMA, I like different things as well. Um, but one thing that I'm just personally, you know, though I recognize it's highly effective, it's just what for when I'm watching a fight, you know, as a fight fan, um, I'm not the biggest fan of, you know, Khabib just because of, or ha you know, hasn't, haven't been the biggest fan of Khabib just because of his uh, style, that's all. I think he's probably a great person, you know? Um, it seems that way. But his fight style is not just, it's not my preference and that's all. So I don't have to like that. I don't, he doesn't, not everybody has to like him. And his coach said this, uh, and it was even I think before the fight, you know? that not everybody has to like him, but you have to respect him. And I also, so I didn't really care for his fight style. I didn't really, I'm not a fan of his. And uh, <clears throat> I also looked at, you know, what what can I really say besides my preference of that I don't like kind of just watching guys do the, the, the fight style and, and kind of ground and pound uh, or just wrestle, 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 take down, take down, take down. And I'm a boxing, I like my strike, you know? Um, that's just my preference, I'm entitled to that. Uh, everybody is, to their, to, to their own preference of what they'd like to see. Um, and that's what makes fans. But here's the thing, so I'm not jumping on the Khabib bandwagon, it's just not my, he's just not my cup of tea in that sense. But I am going to give, give up everything that I've ever um, felt or said about Khabib um, as far as taking away from his greatness, though. You know, um, no one's ever done this to Justin Gaethje. This is, this is, this was so impressive, you know. Uh, very disappointing, obviously, for me. But you gotta recognize it. You gotta recognize it. And again, I'm still, I'm just not, I'm not the, a, a crazy fan of his um, due to the fight style. But look at how effective the guy's been. You know, before this fight started, um, I was telling, you know, even my friends and, and things, I don't know if I've even mentioned it on here, that he doesn't, he hadn't had that many, um, for a 28-0, you know, now 29-0 record, but for a 28-0 record, you know, he really hadn't had, like, that many um, people where you can be like, oh, he's gone through the whole lightweight division. You know, he honestly fought a lot of nobodies when he started off. Um, then this is no fault of his own, but uh, you know when he got the title and and he faced Ally Quinta, I think Al was ranked 11th in the world. He's like outside of the top 10, and that's the guy that you take the title from. Um, 
you know, I just didn't like, so to me, his really good wins were Edson Barboza, Conor McGregor, Dustin Poirier. Those were, to me, out of everybody he's, he's faced, with respect to Michael Johnson as well, who's a great fighter. But, you know, you could throw that in there, so you could say four. But, yeah, though, out, of, out of 28 fights, you know, if you have three or at most four of them that are impressive against, you know, guys, this is usually when, like, for instance, Israel Adesanya has, you know, that many impressive wins. You know, that fight of the year with Kelvin Gastelum. Um, granted, what, what we see now, this is always change your perspective, right, of what we see now with Kelvin and where he's at. Um, this was not the case then, you know. He was winning. He, he deserved that interim title shot with Izzy, and that was a fight of the year, you know, 100%. Um, and he has that. Then he took the belt off of Robert Whitaker, you know, who's, uh, you know, I mean, enough said there. You know, then he then the Yoel fight was just lackluster, but I put that more on Yoel. That's still a win over Yoel. And then to see what he did to to um, you know Paulo Costa, and look at where he's at. You know, he's a younger guy. So this is usually actually though he he did it fast. But what I'm saying is that usually when you see a guy who has three or four very impressive wins, this is when they're taking off, right? And there's a lot more to come. Um, so with Khabib, you know, he, you know, he, he, there's a lot of people in that lightweight division that he hadn't fought. Now, that being said at this point and with what he did to Justin Gaethje, I don't think that there, I, I don't, I think it's fine that he retires really. Cause I don't think that there's anybody that is posing a threat to him, his style that he uses. And again, that's whether it's my preference or not, those are just facts. And so if I'm really being honest, yeah, I just don't see it now after what he did to Justin Gaethje. But um, that's a very respectable career, of course. And he has to be in talks for the greatest, um, you know, I, I am not, I mean, I'm not, so again, just, this is just my opinion. My, I come to you humble with just my own opinion. Um, I'm not putting him even in the talks for the greatest of all time. I'm not, I'm not doing that because of several reasons. Yeah, he has, he has great wins, but a lot of people have far, you know, more numbers of great opponents they face and great wins. Um, and a lot of people change weight classes. Not to mention, you know, Khabib, you know, has always had problems with the weight cut because he's a huge lightweight. He really, you know, it's surprising that he never did welterweight. He might have been a natural welterweight, really. You know, with the he's gone to the hospital several times over the weight cut. This weight cut he made, and everybody, including myself, was saying he looks horrible on on the scale. Um, so that's a factor, man. You know, and I give credit where credit's due. I think that it's very fair to say that he's the greatest lightweight ever. And then there's of course arguments for that. Um, but I think that that's fair to say. And that's a bit more impressive as well to me than a lot of other divisions because I'm a big, really big bantamweight fan. Featherweight is quite stacked at this point as well. You know, middleweight's not too shabby, but lightweight is hands down for me the deepest division that there is um, in the sport of MMA. Period. Never mind the UFC. Um, you know, so to be king of that division says more than being the king of other divisions, kind of. But when you're talking pound for pound, I mean, just come on. You, you have to do, you, I'm, I'm respecting here what the guy's done, but, you know, that's still, that's still John Jones. You're still in St. Pierre talk, uh, you know, People like the Anderson. Again, I'm not a big even pound for pound guy. What I do like to do is do a kind of, uh, not pound for pound, but the greatest of the division, you know? And it doesn't matter who's like a champion at that time, but even to say of all time, because you can break that down better in one division, you know, in boxing or in MMA. But, uh, so I'm not a big fan of the overall, you know, pound for pound talk though. 
Um, and it gets kind of silly. There. There's so many divisions. I'm talking about heavyweights versus, you know, smaller guys. And who's to, you know, if, if your body was built like a heavyweight, you couldn't have the gas tank. You could never have the gas tank of these smaller guys. You know, you couldn't even get close to it. You couldn't do um, half the technical stuff that the smaller guys do. It's uh, that's, but lightweight is really probably my favorite division. And it pains me to say that I think you have to put him as the goat of that division, you know? Um, especially after seeing what he did to Justin Gaethje. So that first round, we'll get into the fight here. That first round was, was very competitive um, from, from Justin. But here's the, here's the key. Yeah, well, it was very competitive until the last 40, 30 seconds when, when Khabib got that takedown and then even attacked the submission you know, within the last 10, 15 seconds um, from there and, and did completely, you know, steal that round. Before that had happened, it was up for debate because I think that Khabib had one or at most two more significant strikes than Gaethje. You know, something like 19 to 17 or 18 to 19, something like that. Um, <clears throat> uh, but, you know, Gaethje's uh, were harder. They just were, you know, he, he's the striker. So his leg kicks um, that he got a couple off and a couple of those overhands, you know, hit quite hard. Um, so it was very competitive till that point. But I want to say it's like as soon as the fight started, you know, uh, it, it what, what you have to notice going on, even though it's highly competitive there for a while, is that Justin's not doing what he promised us. He's not doing, he's not sticking to his game plan of car crashes, man. This is what he said in interviews. I want as many, to create as many car crashes as I can, you know, because Khabib likes to walk people down. This is how he gets ring control. This is how he gets guys to the fence and then gets takedowns. This is how he controls the fight, is walking people down, making them worry about the takedown. And Justin said, I'm going to meet him every time in the middle of that ring and not let him walk me down. But what did he actually do? Even though he was able to be somewhat effective in, you know, spurts of that first round, still, you're, you're doing what everybody else is doing. You're circling the cage. You're letting him walk you down to the back of the cage. And then, you know, he didn't try, he tried his might to not let his back get to the fence. That's very true. Um, in the end of the first round, though, he couldn't even stop that. You know, he got taken down right there against the fence line. Um, but he was, he was circling around. He wasn't meeting him. He wasn't meeting him and standing there and saying, go for the, go for the takedown. We'll trade shots, go for the takedown, I dare you. You know, Khabib needs to be pressured like that. And that's a, he's never been pressured like that. That's what needs to happen. It's not about... You know, all oh, the takedown that comes and do I wait? Do I try to get up and expend energy? Do I sit, you know, like Connor did and preserve more energy, but I can stop him from passing. I can do wrist control so he can't ground and pound or do anything from his position after the takedown. It's not really as much about that, I don't think. I think it's more about like what Justin was saying that got me so excited here. Uh, that's what I had thought. That's what I agreed with is that you need somebody who will just from right out the gate not let Khabib do the first thing that he goes to, which is to walk you down. He gets in your mind because you're scared of that takedown and he doesn't go for it right away. He, he spends a couple minutes usually where he's walking you down with the strikes. Then he throws in when he knows that he's got you just circling the cage and he's just chasing you the whole time. Then you're on edge. You're throwing punches, you know, um, you know when you're not coming off, you, you know, you're throwing punches coming, uh, you know, while you're backing up, it's never as effective. Um, he didn't do that for this fight. So that round one was competitive, but you know, uh, you know, Khabib definitely gets it. But the real story of the fight is that he didn't create those car crashes. And even though he was competitive in that first round, as soon as he got up, uh, when the round ended with Khabib on top of him, trying to submit him, and he looked so tired. He went back to his corner and sat down. He was breathing so hard and he looked so tired. It was un it was remarkable to me. I don't, you know, 
how is that? That's just, I, I didn't see that as any of the scenarios that were even possible that the, 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 in the ways that this fight could play out. You know, that I didn't even see that as, as being a possibility uh, the, that, that he'd tire him in the first round and finish him early at the beginning of that second round just wasn't competitive, you know? Um, and everybody has a preference on their style, I want to say. And, uh, you know, Khabib is um, a wrestle-heavy guy, a kind of wear on your opponent, just wrestle him, do a little ground and pound as the fight goes on. And that's just not what I like to see as a fight fan. I'm entitled to my um, preference, as we all are, of what we, we like to see and the people we like. So he's just not one of them, but yeah, you got to you gotta give him the... You got to give him, and I do give him, you know, the res that respect. And he's probably the greatest lightweight of all time. Um, you know, um, the Jared Cannonier robert Whitaker fight was incredibly impressive to me. Also, the way that people were, you know, what is that on Twitter there on, on the ESPN, you know, popping, popping stuff up. Oh, I got uh, Robert winning every round of this fight going... To I mean, I, I was getting mad about that, honestly. And uh, the commentator saying, yeah, no, that's maybe sounds right that it's about this way. It, uh, to me, that first round goes to Jared. And then, uh, you know, I've even heard other people say um, that the second round's up for debate. To me, for what I saw, I'll just stick to what I saw. I'm not going to change because of what other people said. I thought Jared got the first round. Then I thought that he close lost the set, did lose the second, and then obviously Robert just taken over in that third round. So very deserving of winning the fight. Got it completely right. But again, like the boxes, I just hate to see stuff like this. You know, where uh, people, you know, they you're you're really not giving. It doesn't matter to it. Like it, it, it's the most important that the right guy wins. That is the most important thing, obviously, but sometimes that doesn't happen because of the judges, right? So when somebody even is deserving of the win, but they like the Lomachenko card that we talked about, like countless, I mean, it happens every damn time, you know, in a certain fight of any boxing event and a lot of times in the MMA events almost every or every other MMA event and every single boxing event it happens we talk about the 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 times where people get robbed of a of a win they should have had in our eyes you know because of the judges right and then we're all fired up everybody get kind of gets behind that and says this is outrageous and you took a win away from this guy so obviously the most important thing is that the right guy wins and the, but when the right guy wins Still look at the judges' scorecards, man, because this is how you got to stay on them. This is how we got to, you know, start making any sort of change in this kind of thing is by always looking at those scores, like the Loma fight. The right guy won, but but that, that I forget her name. That woman that, uh, judge that scored it, you know, 119 to 109 I think what that that's how that's outrageous that's atrocious that's that's stupid he won two rounds out of that fight come on there's four definite absolute undebatable rounds you know and so in this Jared fight it's kind of the same deal you know Robert 100% deserved that win but I think that Robert Whitaker, I honestly think, even the, being as the kind of person that uh, I presume him to be in the way he talks, I believe would say the same thing, that like, man, that fight was very competitive. That was a very good fight against a very tough guy. And when you just have it as a sweep, when really the guy won the first round, some people, like I said, I did not give him the second round, but it was close, and some people kind of flipped it. And gave Rob the first, but gave him that second round. You know, it was highly competitive until that third round. And then even in that third round, because Jared got rocked, those, he showed all the heart in the world when myself and everyone else thought, the announcers included, that the fight was over. You know, 
when he got rocked and when he got uh, put down or taken down, I, I, you know, everybody um, thought that the fight was over and I did too. And he showed all the heart in the world, not just surviving, but then getting back to his feet from that as well. I mean, it's inspiring for me to, this is why I'm a fight fan. It's inspiring to watch that kind of stuff. And I get a little bit worked up when people present a great, a great fight like Robert Whitaker versus Jared Cannonier as just some sort of sweep. Guarantee you that's not how Robert Whitaker felt about the fight. Guarantee you he saw the competitiveness in Jared. Guarantee you Robert would say, yeah, you could give him one of those rounds at least. You know, guarantee Robert wasn't comfortable in winning that fight until he got into the third round. Then, he, of course, he knew he had it. <clears throat> and Jared also, even after getting back to the feet, then there's just like a, a less than a minute left. I remember it being 50-something seconds left when, they, when he got back to his feet and they had separated finally from against the cage. And I said, like, oh, man, you know, this is crazy. And Jared did the stuff that as a fight fan, you sit there screaming with your buddies for, come on, I'll give him all you got, you only got a minute. And Jared gave, Jared gave it everything that he had in that fight. And in that last 50 seconds, he was trying his damnedest to take Robert Whitaker out of there. Um, that was a great fight to me. I, am, I wanna do a more in-depth breakdown on it possibly is what I'm kind of considering here um, and have been considering because again, I want to put, uh, I want to shine some light on this fight to those that maybe that's their first fight card or they've only watched a few and they're getting into the sport um, or they're a boxing guy and they're coming over to MMA, um, anything like that where maybe you don't, 100% understand things, you'd be very, as I was when I began watching the sport, You, if you don't understand much of, of, of anything coming into watching something like that, then you're very susceptible to what other people and the commentators and judges and things say, because you're not able to see the fight um, with your own opinion, with your own eyes. You, you, you kind of, rely, everybody does this naturally, until you watch them long enough, um, or you, you know, of course, if you start, you know, even doing a little light training and things, you'll be able to pick up on more of what's going on in there, um, anything like that, or you just watch a, a bunch more fights, you have more years and years of experience of watching them, um, you're very, you know, susceptible to what uh, people say. Um, especially watching the sport and having the commentators and, and, and reading judges' scorecards and things. I think even though the judges' scorecards did give Jared actually one round, I, I believe, um, which is very fair. But, you know, you, yeah, that, that fight was so much more epic than people probably, than a lot of people probably realize, you know, because it was presented as like a sweep, you know. It was not that. It was highly competitive and it was a great fight. Um, and I loved seeing afterwards, you know, Jared posting about, uh, you know, sitting there with a cast on and his eye all messed up. And he's sitting there with uh, Robert and he said, Robert, you know, lived, well, that didn't go the way I want, but Robert Whitaker certainly lived up to his name in the fight and after, and Rob's there with him. You know, I think it looks like they're having a drink. Um, and they're, they're just sitting there taking a picture together. That's awesome to see. That's what this is all about, you know? Amazing how two people go in there like that and give all of themselves and then, you know, come away and can be friends and, you know, more than even just being uh, nonchalant friendly. Uh, so I thought that was epic. Um, and then Volkan, uh, uh, or, or Volkov, sorry, um, uh, just uh, with the front kick to uh, Walt Harris, man, it was something special. And this is why I didn't go with Wal Harris, even though I wanted him to win that, though. You know, this was kind of more of a sure thing for me. I mean, they, you know, uh, 
Walt Harris, you know, he looked better even against over him, knocking him down and things. You don't really get to look that good uh, against this guy. He makes all of his opponents not look that good. You know, he, he has a weird style. He's very tall, he's very long, he has reach, he uses it well, he keeps distance well, um, and he's got good kicks. So, yeah, I kind of saw this one coming, but amazing how he finished him to the stomach and just that front kick, just really, he just put his hands on his, on his stomach and backed up, he couldn't do it anymore. Um, that's 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 incredible. That 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 was an incredible finish to watch. Um, and then the Kutalaba fight, you know, we picked that one wrong too. I I thought I'd go with Kutalaba. He's this is kind of probably just more about the, you know, the guy's fun to watch and he comes out just just this intense stare and you know does the throat slit stuff. Um, so he's fun to watch. But we 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 saw where he's at, man. You got a lot of work to do. A lot of work because this is ankle I have you know taking nothing away from him but you know imagine even the competitors that the many competitors that are that are above him um, you know in the division um, you just got a lot of work to do because even with ankle I've you just got you just got that was so dominant that was so dominant ankle I've just with the, the straight jab the the you know the the straight jab the or the jab and then the straight you know uh, while while uh, Kutalaba is preparing to come in with over, you can't come in like that. You just can't do that. That's this is what makes the guy fun to watch, the Hulk, you know. And he goes in there and tries to just throw these crazy shots. But you got to learn some. You got to do. You got to you got to pick up on a lot more. Or you're just gonna keep losing um, because that's just we saw a ceiling was not Ankalaev, like the way that fight went, his ceiling is somewhere well below Ankalaev. Um, that looked like rookie stuff, you know? He's getting dropped just trying several times, twice, just trying to come in, um, you know, because he's not coming in properly with a, with a, to lead in with a jab or to lead in with feints and then have a reaction and counter, you know, to lead, come in with kicks and then go up top. You, he's just coming in throwing those overhands. You can't do that, you know? You just can't do that. That's like the number, that's like a, almost like a, that's like a, that's like one of the first things that you'll learn, you know, is, 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 is how to enter the pocket. And there is no one alive that will tell you, you know, who knows anything about fighting or is a coach or is anything that will tell you, enter the pocket with some crazy big, you know, telegraphed overhand, um, or enter the pocket with some, you know, very telegraphed uh, hooks and put all your power in. That's nuts. That's nuts. That's not how you do it. You know, those are finishing up punches after you enter the pocket with jabs, kicks, feints, things like that. Um, so that that was, yeah, that was what that was. But. Uh, it was a very good night of fights. You know, there were very good fights. I was just so swept away um, by what Khabib did to Justin. Again, you got to know that Khabib always had, you know, that's why the odds are the odds. He always had the, the, the very high chance of winning that fight. But there were several ways that I could see how he could, how it would go if Khabib did win that fight. And this is why I was so excited because I thought that all of them entailed them being in the later rounds and Khabib taking some damage and a lot of them entailed Khabib even maybe getting cut. I don't even want to say I that I really thought that, oh, he'd get dropped. I thought at least cut or dropped, you know, either one. Um, he just never has been. He's never been cut and he's never been dropped. I mean, how, how, how fucking dominant, you know, really. The guy, you know, it's just nuts. It's nuts that you're 29 and 0, and that you've lost one round ever, which was to Conor McGregor, the third round. That's the only round that judges ever gave him, you know. And I don't want to like, I don't, I don't, uh, yeah. There's a Gleason T bout fight that I'd love to talk about right now, but I'm not even gonna do that because honestly, I, I want to show that as I am not a big Khabib fan, I'm giving all the respect that is due right now to him. Um, that was so impressive. Yeah. 
and I hope that uh, you know and he yeah he deserves everything that he's that he's gotten you know I don't have to be a fan and I, and, I, and I can still be be realistic about things though sometimes it pains me a little but I, I think I, I think that if anything on this on this channel here I can I can um, with these fight picks and breakdowns and things like that I think that one thing I can offer honestly is is everybody has bias and so I do too but I want to be upfront about it and I think that one thing that I can offer is really um, making it a point to myself and in intentionally going into these things trying to be fair. Um, I think that's something I can bring that, that a lot of people can. Even people that know a lot more about fighting than me, um, th th they're not able to do that. So I want to, you know, Khabib, you know, I salute you. That's, that's um, so impressive what you did there. Uh, and then Justin, after the fight too, going up to him, it, it was kind of touching, he's crying because his father had passed away, you know, could be in, in the octagon there after his victory. And Justin came up to him and, and, and was saying something uh, they couldn't hear. And I guess they, he whispered it to him. I guess they asked him after, what'd you say to him? And he said that, I just told him, hey man, I haven't had a chance to tell you I'm so sorry about your father, the loss of your father. Um, and I know he'd be real proud of you um, after what you just did tonight. And man, that's a, that says a lot about Justin's character. That's a that's a really good um, that's a really really good you know sportsmanlike thing to do. Um, but yeah, uh, it was good fights. There was um, I'm, I think I might do a separate episode here. But there was the uh, uh, um, there was a boxing event. Um, Clay, I believe it was Clayton and Lipinitz. Um, that that happened and yet again as we just kind of went over <clears throat> just all over the place talking about with the judges again with the with the with the judges of the sport of boxing um this one i wanted to dedicate mainly to just really giving my respect to to khabib you know i i do want to do that um and and just you know as i just did touching on the fights that had happened in this crazy big UFC event, um, but I think that then I'll, I'll leave this one as that and going over the UFC event um, and Khabib stuff, and then I might do another one where we talk about that, that boxing event, because um, that takes a while. That's like its whole own thing, and I get real worked up with talking about the, the damn judges in the sport. I mean, it's insane. It's literally insane. You know, it's like at some point, like people have this infatuation. Here I go again, maybe a little rant here about it real quick. People have this like infatuation about uh, a lot of people about it, not just judges, but in, in kind of any job, right? Where they go like, they, they like uh, make it the equivalent of like being a rocket scientist or an astronaut or a brain surgeon. These are things that not anybody can do, right? But there's a lot of jobs, man that almost anybody can do. There's a lot of people on the world. There's probably too many people in the world today, kind of my opinion, but the thing is, is that of course there's some people that are, you know, for whatever reasons or problems or whatever, that they can't do things that most people can, but what I'm, I'm saying most people can do a lot of jobs. Now, being a judge, it's like people give, some people give too much credit to say, wow, well, geez, I just watched that fight, and to my eyes, that's crazy that the judges would give it to this guy. But then they just immediately go, yeah, but you know what? I must, hey, who am I to tell the judges? They do this for a living and they're old guys that have been watching the sport of boxing forever and involved with it. So what do I know? And it's like, usually that's a good thing, you know, to kind of concede to, but you can't always do that. Sometimes if if you see a chicken walking across the road and you go, hey, that's a chicken. And then some bird expert comes up and goes, actually, that's a, a rare uh, yellow beaked woodpecker. Sometimes you just look at the guy and go, nah, it's a fucking chicken though, huh? And I know that. I don't need to be a bird expert to know that, you know? So 
that's one thing I'll just say, and I think I'll do a separate episode about this uh, Lipinets fight, but you know, yeah, it, 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 it makes me really mad with the judges, it does. It makes me really fired up because they're taking things away from these fighters left and right, and because they're taking uh, things away from the fight fans as well who are watching the fight and that are fans of these fighters that, you know, anything. It, you, you, you're just tarnishing the sport in every way. Um, doing stuff like that and and the thing that I'm so though riled up it's not that it's like people are gonna be people right and people have biases some people maybe are corrupt who knows I don't I'm not, I'm not even a guy who shouts like Teddy Atlas about corruption Teddy Atlas would know this is true Teddy Atlas is he doesn't always say things that I agree with but he's a guy that'll just say what he really thinks so he's a guy that you can count on for never saying what other people want him to say. He's just gonna say what he thinks and he's been around the sport of boxing forever. Um, and Teddy rants about corruption. I do not think it's all corruption. I think it's more incompetence, but I'm open to the fact that even some of these guys may be corrupt, you know? Um, especially with the betting odds, the betting, you know, the, the fact that you, how can you have a sport, right? Where you can bet on a fight Right? You can place a bet on a fight that you will then go judge and or referee. That's an insane uh, uh, conflict of interest right there. An insane conflict of interest. You can't have that. I mean, you cannot have that. Other sports don't allow that. You know, why, why, why does boxing? Uh, you... you so yeah, we'll do the we'll do the separate breakdown anyway before I get into it. But it was a good night of um, UFC. We had a lot of fun with our friends.